I'd like to introduce our honorary president, Dr. Chang, from Seoul, Korea. You've all read his bio sketch. He is a true pioneer, and the definition of a pioneer is an individual who pursues excellence through hard working, through hard work, risk taking, and innovation. And no person has stretched the envelope further than Dr. Chang. Good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, as Professor Kassar mentioned, that I'm lucky to involve you know, this new innovative surgical techniques. And uh, especially, I want to give a special thanks to, to Professor Kassar and the organizing committee of this symposium for inviting me as an uh, honorary presence. Uh, in my so present time, I want to uh, show the, my personal perspective of the, the focus of the sound for functional brain disorders. So no one, no functional neurosurgeons believe the efficacy of this procedure is about 10 to 15 years ago, but uh, I was very lucky because my close friend uh, was an uh, ultrasonic engineer. He introduced and he informed me about this new, brand new techniques a long time ago. And uh, about six years ago, when I first met the uh, people in, in SciTech, I was really excited to involve in the new the field, especially for the functional neurosurgery. Uh, in this presentation, I'll briefly talk about uh, my personal perspective regarding uh, the focus of the sound for functional disorders. Uh, let me start first to, uh, to introduce my university and hospital. My university is very, has very unique stories. Uh, my university and hospital was developed by the uh, North American missionary doctors, especially Dr. Allen. Uh, he's Dr. Allen. He was an American missionary physician of the Embassy of the United States in 1940, 1884. He, accidentally treat the king's brothers, and the king supported him to have establish the first modern hospital in Korea in 1885. And the next year, Dr. Avison, he is a Canadian missionary doctor. He was a former the professor of the University of Toronto. Uh, he became uh, the dean of the medical school in Korea. And he met uh, Louis Severance as a millionaire of the Cleveland and he donated a lot of money to make a hospital and medical school in uh, 1904. In our school, we had the system in the December of the year 2011, and uh, I started the first clinical trial for essential tremor from March to December, and also I started the first OCD trial from the February of the year 2013 to May of the year 2014. In the meantime, I also encountered the several difficult issues I already uh, the demonstrated in this meeting, and we discovered the, uh, the skull issues for the successful treatments. And as you know, the, I also involved in the, the global the multicenter trial for essential tremor. And uh, recently, the, I'm almost finishing the clinical trial for Parkinson's disease. And uh, I just started the clinical trial for patients with the depressions with the uh, middle frequency device. And, uh, and uh, from this year, I start to treat a patient with OCD with a new device, so-called low frequency device. And uh, maybe next uh, two years later, I can present my data with low frequency device. Maybe some of you can remember this slide, and I presented this data two years ago at this meeting. And uh, at the time, I, we didn't know the, why we encountered you know, the, so many failures in our patient with essential tremor and obsessive compulsive disorders. But we fortunately identified the, uh, the factors, so-called skull issues, skull density dilations, skull volumes, and we 
the identified these two factors are very important to make a successful treatment of the, the focus ultrasound. And also, the, as Professor Kassem mentioned, uh, I'm also trying to treat the patient with OCD and depressions. And so far, I treat them over 18 patients with obsessive compulsive disorders. And from last year, I started to treat a patient with depressions. There are many uh, different types of the surgical uh, method in our the functional neurosurgeries. As you may know, the most important in the, the surgical technique, the mainstay treatment of the functional neurosurgery is the deep brain stimulations. And the many scientists and engineers want to miniaturize or want to put some additional information by adaptive stimulation or the BMI to make effective stimulations. However, I believe the one of the most important surgical technique in the functional neurosurgery is minimally invasive procedures. And in that aspect, radiosurgery was in the one candidate of these procedures. However, I believe that MR guide focused ultrasound will be the most important minimally invasive surgical procedures in my field of the stereotactic and functional neurosurgeries. Certainly, I compare the, 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 the benefit of these procedures, but compared to the gamma knife, different stimulation, and the conventional radio frequency thermal reasoning, MR guide focal ultrasound doesn't have any surgical risk, no need to worry about anesthesia, no need to worry about how the complications that occurred can occur in the different stimulations. No need to worry about the invasiveness. It's a really less invasive procedures than DBS or RF lesionings. And the hospital stay is almost same as the gamma knife radio surgeries. And also, no need to worry about adverse radiation side effects. At this moment, you know, the, this MR guide the focus of the sounds are, is you know, applying for the treating patient with movement disorders and pain disorders in the world. But as I demonstrate in some patient with OCD and depressions, I believe that you know, this te technique can be applicable for the many other psychiatric or epileptic disorders. And I also believe that if we are using different techniques, like BBB opening, we can use this technique to improve memory functions, so-called cognitive problems or dementia in your futures. You know, the previous experience of the essential tumor, we also identified the uh, transient BBB openings. This is the case of the patient with the essential tremors. This is the MR immediate after the treatments. One day after the treatment, as you see, the contrast enhancement was disappeared. It means that there's a transient BBB opening after the MR guide for sound treatment for patient with essential tremor. And my team is also to set up the animal lab to do the uh, animal experiment to identify this beneficial effect of the BBB opening by the drug delivery. I think in the, every uh, technique has kind of these stages, so-called the conceptual model of stages. And uh, this focus of ultrasound surgical techniques already passed through these barriers. And uh, in your futures, we'll have a you know, lot of you know, the candidate can be an uh, indication of these procedures. This is my conclusion. As we all the considered and the, uh, recognized, brain MR guide focal sound is no longer a dream in the neurosurgical practice. It becomes a reality in functional neurosurgeries. However, there are still many unsolved challenging issues which require small investigations. And also, the, I'm certainly convincing that the brain MR guide focal sound will make a big changes in the current neurosurgical practice in near futures. This is my clinical and the laboratory teams. And uh, uh, 
and uh, I'm collaborating this work with uh, the professor of psychiatry, neurologist, and department of nuclear medicines. And this is my the hospital, the severance hospital. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, finally, I hope that the, you can join the, the our society meeting, World Society for Strategic and Functional Neurosurgery in Berlin in next years. I'm working as a secretary and treasurer of this meeting. And there's a special session for the focus of sound in that World Society meeting. <laughs>